Okay, I'm preparing to do a heater core on this 1988 Thunderbird. Uh, the partic particular car <clears throat> uh, would fit the parameters also with Cougars and some other cars of this period, this being an 88 with a 3.8 engine. First thing I did was disconnect the ground strap on the battery. I'm trying to acquaint myself with the area here under the hood that I need to work on. Down here what you see is the accumulator is missing because I had it taken off and I had the Freon removed what Freon there was in there by a local service station. Once that's done and they capped the lines going into the evaporator core which is also tucked in there with the heater core and the heating plenum I guess you would call it. You now see this space created by the absence of that accumulator. There's a bracket down here that has to come off. The heater hoses have to come off. Those are right in here. The next thing that I did was go inside the car and pop off the grill on the speaker, um, the right speaker here. Um, there's a couple of clips on how this is held. What, what happened though and what was already there was the plastic from the grill broke off into here. That's really nothing you can do about it. It's kind of an age because really the whole clip is supposed to pull out, which it didn't. Um, and that would expose one of the dash screws up here that's shown in the instructions. The other thing I did was drop down the glove box by releasing it by depressing the tabs that are up in the corners here. Um, that allows you to get the door in position that you can take it off. It would come off by removing these screws. Okay, I've just taken off this accumulator bracket from under the hood. Those two nuts are 11 millimeters. And where the accumulator bracket was there's two more 11 millimeter nuts that, as the instructions say, hold the heater plenum or heater core box to the firewall. This is the, uh, the really discs with the 11 millimeter nut as part of that. That's what's holding the uh, heater core plenum to the firewall. Those have to come off. Okay, here are the speaker grills removed and the sensor the front, which reveals the screw for the dash. They're really in the same place. place. I've also taken apart the items below the steering wheel so that you can get to the steering wheel bolts because the steering wheel has to be dropped as the instructions show. Um, I'm also thinking that because you're going to be dropping the steering wheel you're going to have to disconnect the shift lever cable. I'm going to check that, but that could be a real sensitive item to remember. Okay, underneath the car, this is the steering column. There is a shift lever bracket. This cable, this white cable right here, is what shows on the dash what gear you're in. This is a pretty important item here, and it's pretty fragile. I got a feeling when I drop the steering wheel, this thing will be put under considerable stress. So I have loosened this nut right here, and I've taken this off in the past, and I think I'm going to loosen it up, and I'm probably going to take it off so that it doesn't get damaged. Okay, these are the bolts that are along the door edge at the bottom. Both sides have to come out. They are um,
10 millimeters. Okay, here's the bracket that they're talking about that's mounted to the bottom of the panel here. It's also contained or fastened to one of the supports for the steering column. This is supposed to come off, obviously, to pull this out. And that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to take it off here and over there. Okay, once you have loosened the brackets that hold the steering wheel in place, the steering wheel on its own will begin to drop every time you rotate those nuts. I, I took the back ones off first and then began removing the front ones. There's four of them. They're actually 9 16 I believe, uh, contrary to what I read. Uh, in the instructions. I used a rolled up carpet to support the wheel. It's also a tilt wheel so I had that kind of recessed. I'm just hoping that the shift column has enough clearance there to allow that dash to come back. I don't want to really shift the car into neutral or something like that to get that out of the way. I just don't want to monkey with the steering wheel now that it's uh, in the position it's at. So that step is now completed. Okay, one of the final nuts mentioned in the direction is directly above the steering column, somewhat back behind the cluster. I'm holding a socket about where it is. Um, it's uh, like I said, up above the steering column, that has to come out. And um, that's why you probably have to drop the steering wheel for sure. <laughs> One of the reasons it's got to be done for access for that anyway. Okay. Once I was able to or get that nut off the above the steering wheel column it freed up the dash to move it I've only got some wires here that are stretched I'm gonna relieve a little bit of that by removing a, a mounting grommet down here and hopefully uh, this will work out to get this heater core planum box off the firewall the other thing is the shift lever uh, is kind of up against the dash there somewhat. I think I can get a couple more inches. I might have to do something with that. I did lower the steering wheel further because um, it's necessary. Okay, I got the heater core hoses off. You might have to remove um, one of the engine components off this mounting up here to get to it easier. Uh, getting the clamps off and using this handy tool that I have here to pull back the hoses makes the job easy. And uh, I just stored the hoses out of the way so that uh, they wouldn't leak any more than the core is. And I'll probably go ahead and stuff uh, cloth into these holes so that they um, Heater core doesn't um, drip on me. By the way, there is one last nut that you have to remove to get this heater core box out of here. It sits way up by the tunnel on the passenger side. In other words, where the tunnel and the, the feet area are at the very back. It's, uh, I'm showing it to you. Uh, that has to be removed as well. The reach isn't bad if you have uh, long extensions on a ratchet. Uh, you also have to remove the bracket to 
the bolts that hold the brackets here on top of the heater core box. That's one on, that's the inboard side, and that's the outboard side. They're located on top of the heater core box. You can't miss them once you open up this area. Okay, so I found that you must relieve one of these vacuum lines before you pull this in. Fortunately, I haven't caused any grief here because it does go through this opening um, in the firewall back into the passenger compartment. Okay, the vacuum line I was speaking of that was under considerable pressure sits on top of the heater core chamber. It's a pretty thin vacuum line and it runs back out through the partition here that goes out through the firewall because you can see the end of the uh, lines that uh, the evap lines and also the heater core way in the background back here that just came back. So make sure you relieve that line before you pull this back. I'm trusting that's all I had to worry about to get this to its position. By the way, this is the cover right here for the heater core. Okay, there are four screws holding this cover on. Two are pretty obvious. I'm showing the two at the front there's two more back here, which I don't have a view of right now, but that's how this cover will be removed. Okay, I finally got the core box opened. It required a um, flat bladed um, object to get the cover off. It's kind of adhered on here, plus there's some wires that or vacuum lines that are taped to the sides and fastened to one side here. Um, you have to pull those off. There's definitely antifreeze in this box. I can see it in the back. I don't know if you can. And this is how the core sits in here. It lays flat. Looks like it'll be easy to remove, so that'll be my next step. I've already plugged the lines with cloth, and I mean very well, so that I don't have any accidents when I take this out of the car. Okay, I removed the core from the edge that you see sitting down there. And there's a foam-like pad, which I didn't realize. That's actually the heat door, plenum door, airflow door. I'm not sure what the exact term is. But when you move the heat control lever, that opens and closes. So that's pretty much in the closed position there. That This side of that door, the foam side, is all wet with antifreeze. And there was a puddle of antifreeze down in the bottom down here. I've already begun to try to clean this up. I'm not even sure what to do in terms of playing with this door because um, I don't want to put any undue pressure on it or cause it to break. Otherwise, um, you would never be able to shut it properly with the controls. So, and by the way, there's that line that runs out to the engine compartment, that vacuum line that I was talking about earlier. Here's the heater core from this Thunderbird. And you can tell where it was leaking. Uh, that area is right there, discolored in the center. It's wet.
Okay, I have the heater hoses back in their places. What I did is I cut off the ends because there's plenty of extra hose. Um, both of these hoses run to points on the engine that are almost uh, impossible to reach unless you have a lot of patience, and I don't have enough patience on this. I put the accumulator back in position so that the people at the shop can recharge the air conditioning.